We would like to acknowledge the land on which we gather is the occupied territory of the Iowa, Sauk, and Meskwaki, Wahpeton, and Sioux people. I'm going to talk a little bit about dating photos by uh, dress. And I got interested in this, as Bettina said, because of Civil War reenacting. And nobody back when I started knew much about what women wore in the 1860s. So I started collecting pictures. This is a CDV. If you can see the size of it, it's about the size of a playing card. It, it helps date your photos if you have these small carte de visites, they're called, CDVs. They were basically popular from the start of the Civil War till about through the middle of the 80s. And they have a lot of information on, they're nothing on the front but the picture. But if you look at the back, there will be information on the back. The plainer the information on the back, the earlier it is. So it's very plain with just a name and a uh, city, then it's gonna be a very early, like the early 60s. CDV. This particular one says G. Doms photographer, Brady Street, corner of alley between 2nd and 3rd Davenport, Iowa. So it gives a lot of information on the back as well as, as well as the picture on the front. And then from the middle 70s through the through 1900, we switched to cabinet cards. And this is a this is a cabinet card. You can see it's much bigger. And if you look on the back, they're, they become very ornate. So you can get a lot of information from the back. So if you have these pictures, remember to look at the back too. And a lot of times people will write on the back a name of a person. So it helps identify the person. So what I wanted to talk about, about besides using the, the cards to actually help narrow down the date is the actual clothing. And I'm going to try to go quickly by decades. This is the middle of 1860s. 1860s are really easy to identify if you have anything that early. It Women always had an hourglass shape. They had dropped shoulder seams, so they looked wide at the shoulder, a natural but very tight waist, and the hoop skirt. Anytime you see a hoop skirt, that is a 60s photo. So look when you're looking at photos, look at the silhouette of the dress, and that's going to help you decide what they are. This is 1870s through the 1880s. The picture on my left is um, a lady from early 1870s. The hoop skirt kind of flattened out in the front and switched around to the back and became a bustle. And so that lady has a bustle in the back of her skirt. It's draped around the front and it pulls to the back into a bustle. So if you see a picture of a woman with a bustle, it's either going to be Early 70s, if it's small like this and kind of draped and looped. And then in the early 80s, the bustle came back and it was almost straight out from the waist. People joked about how um, you could set a dinner plate on that bustle and you could eat dinner on it because it was so flat and stuck out so far. And then a lot of dresses did not have bustles and the lady on the right with the light colored dress is indicative of both the 70s and the 80s, they're kind of hard to tell apart. You need to get more detail than what I'm going to give you. But this is a typical outline of a woman in the 70s and 80s. She has a very tight corseted and boned bodice. And it goes down past her waist to her hips or a little over her hips. And that is called a basque bodice. And that was very common in the 70s and the 80s. Still had long sleeves and very long skirts. Um, in the 70s, they, the skirts were more draped. In the 80s, they become less draped, but there was a lot of asymmetrical patterns in the dresses. So that is the 80s. And then we can go. Just a quick word about the gentlemen. It's very, very hard to date gentlemen by their clothes because their clothes pretty much did not change from the time photography became popular till 1880s at least. So here I have pictures of the two common types of clothing men would wear in the anywhere from the 60s all the way through to even the 90s. So the gentleman, the young man on the left is wearing a frock coat. And the easiest way to tell a frock coat is a frock coat always came down to around the knees, either just above or just below the knees. And the only difference is in the eras of these coats is very minute, like 
how full the sleeves are, how big the lapel is, whether it's buttoned high up or whether it's opened, and whether the vest and or the trousers match the jacket. The gentleman on the right is wearing a very fancy sack coat. Sack coats came in during the Civil War because they couldn't make frock coats to fit the soldiers fast enough. So they developed what they called a sack coat, which basically was a square, a box of material with arms and lapels. And it was there was no fitting whatsoever. And so this gentleman has on a sack coat and this was very, very popular all the way through the turn of the century. Okay, now we're in the uh, 90s. The 90s were starting to really transition away from the, the but they still had all the long skirts You'd always see long skirts. The, the two young ladies on the left have very broad cape-like decorations on their shoulders and very big puffy sleeves down to their elbow and then they become very tight. This was very common in the 90s. So anytime you see that, that big shape in the shoulders and the sleeves, that is gonna be the 90s. And then you also have in the 90s, the trend for women of, are working a lot now and they're and they're wanting clothes that are easier to wear and take care of when they go to work so you find the transition into the what they call shirt waist what we call a blouse but a shirt waist normally white um, and the sleeves don't always have to go down to the wrist anymore because they're working and maybe they don't want to get their sleeves dirty and then very slim gourd skirts and that was that is indicative of the late 80s into the 90s and here we have three ladies from the 1900s. The, the shirt waist and the skirt are still uh, visible, but they have a pattern of what they call the pigeon breast, which you can see, it, and they also called it a mono breast. The big puffy there, they're still wearing a corset under there, but the, the shirt waist is not tight. It is big and puffy and is coming over down over right into their belt. And this was very common, especially especially these ladies were probably working girls. And another thing about the 1900s is look at that hairstyle. That's very common for the 1900s. So that's another clue for 1900s for, for ladies. This is just another quick view. This is a, a wedding picture. She has got very obviously a pigeon breast on that puts her on the 1900s. And then on the right, we find a lady, a very sophisticated lady wearing a very tailored suit and they, she has lost the pigeon breast and ha, uh, has a suit, she, she's even wearing leather gloves. And the, the thing that's most common about this is the late eighties and the late nineties and 1900s, these very large hats were popular. And as it went on from the nineties to 1900s, they got bigger and bigger and bigger. So if you see a giant hat, you're looking at the eighties and the nineties. Uh -oh. <laughs> this is the 1910s and again they're pretty much like it was in the 1900s you see a lot of um, the pigeon breast is gone but but they're no longer fitted bodices they're no longer those tight born boned corseted dresses that we're wearing in early periods they're loose and some of them are skirts and blouse and belted as you can see these ladies and a lot of it from 1900 on a lot more light colors because it was easier to do laundry. So you'd see a lot more light colors than you would in the early years. And here we have a very definite switch. This is the 1920s, the era of the flappers. So once you hit any picture with, with, with women with hems that are well, well above the ankle and especially those up to the knee, that is gonna be 1920 or later because everything before that was very long skirts. And here you see the typical flapper that you can picture. You've seen pictures of flappers doing the Charleston or whatever, only these are not nighttime fancy dresses. These are regular daytime dresses, but they have a straight down silhouette. The waist is down around the hips and not at the waist at all. And that is very typical of the 1920s. This is just another picture of the 1920s. Look at how different that is from just a decade before when everybody still had long dresses and long sleeves and you never saw any skin except your hands and your maybe your ankles. 
this is the 30s that now now you're seeing a transition more the lady on the left has more of a style almost like the flappers of the 20s only the waist is back normally at her waist and she's got a, a little bit longer skirt transitioning to the late 30s and these dresses in my eyes they kind of look like what my grandma used to wear all the time and she used to call them house dresses so they're almost looking like a 50s type of dress and uh to the knees around the knees and and uh, a lot of patterns and um uh, I don't know what else to say about those. They're they're pretty common. And then we get to the 40s where I'm going to stop, and that that becomes the war era, and things became very plain because of shortages of all kinds of things during the war. Plus, during the war, there's a tendency to adopt kind of military-style uniforms. So women began to wear very slim and very straight, very plain, especially the lady on the right uh, suit like almost like a military type suit and that is very common in the 40s i guess all i want you to take away from this is just look at the silhouette and judging by the length of the dress and the general shape of the dress hopefully you can tell at least within a decade or two and then the other important thing to remember is nowadays you know we have the internet if you're not sure about a date just google fashions for the 1840s or fashions for the 1940s. And it's going to pop up with descriptions and even pictures. And from what I've been looking at so far, I think they're all very accurate. So if you have any questions about what you're looking at, just, just Google the approximate date. Hopefully this will get you an approximate date and then you can Google it and go from there.